This is the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast. Thank you for listening, subscribing, and hitting subscribe on your friend's phone without them knowing. Coming to you live from the Zoom closet in the beautiful kitchen studios in downtown Raleigh. This episode is sponsored in part by Spot On, tech that helps your business grow. Request a demo at spoton.com. And Joe Van Gogh Coffee, serving the community from seed to cup. And now, they might be talking molecular gastronomy or simply blowing hot air. It's Max Trujillo and Matthew Weiss. Hello, and thank you for listening to the North Carolina Food and Beverage Podcast. I am your co-host, Max Trujillo. And I am your co-host, Matthew Weiss. And today, we are talking about fuel. Not the type of fuel that's skyrocketing through your wallet and the prices and your bank account. I'm talking about the food, the fuel of food. And here to discuss it, how you can get it quickly and healthily, is the CEO of Jimmy Bars, one Jim Simon. Hello, Jim. Thanks for having me, guys. Glad to be here. Yeah, we are, uh, as the intro would indicate, coming to you from a Zoom closet somewhere all across the country. Uh, I'm in Charlotte right now, about to go into a food show uh, hosted by the Cisco people. Matt somewhere in Raleigh or so, Elizabeth somewhere in Raleigh. But uh, but Jim, you're coming to us from the non the non daylight savings abiding state of Arizona, as we just discussed. Yeah, so I'm based in Scottsdale, and uh, the company's actually we're based in Chicago. So during COVID, I don't know 2020 when uh, you know when you were doing actually we're still doing most of our calls by Zoom, you know, to retailers. Sure. I've gone out and seen a lot of Costco people, but other than that, um, it's all been Zoom. And so my wife and I decided pretty good time to uh, hit the road. So we spent a year in Beaver Creek. Uh, In-laws have a place there. And then we came down to Arizona and said, let's just stay. <laughs> so that that's about the amount of thought that it took. And we like it down there. But it is Arizona in midsummer. So what is it like 183 degrees right now? It's hot. I mean, it's put it this way. The only thing I don't like about Arizona is right this second because my favorite thing to do is an entrepreneur. You need to get your head right before you start work or get your head right after work. Right. And so yeah. for me, it's five mile walks with my dog. I've got a Weimaraner. And um, and so we'll do our five mile walks every day. But I can't unless I want to wake up at five and that's not happening. And um, because if I I mean, hell, by like nine in the morning, it's uh, it's been a hundred, and that's too hot for it. So that's the only bummer. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> other than that, it's a it's a great place to uh, to to live and work. But nice. it's a dry heat. I mean, it's a dry <laughs> heat. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's that. But anyhow, this is not a weather show. Let's get into this. And and actually, because you brought up the uh, the old Zoom calls and how 2020 kind of forced our hand to connect with each other in various ways. That's also kind of how we're connected together today because we're not specifically connected to North Carolina as which our podcast's title would inform. Um, although I imagine that a North Carolinian could probably purchase a Jimmy bar if they uh, so desired, whether online or at some shop. They should purchase it. They yeah. Um, but let's, let's get into that. Let's talk about Jimmy yeah. functional snacks. What do we got here? So in a really crowded and popular category that are snacks, bars, whatever, right? Anything uh, anything worth doing is usually uh, already done and it's popular. So uh, in 2014, I started the company with my sister, who's a classically trained chef and a restaurateur. Um, I was in technology. Uh, I had a nice gig um, and I uh, decided to start a company anyway, which probably uh, wasn't smart but it's act, uh, actually worked out. So I didn't know anything about CPG, zero, other than I wanted to, you know, is my next business, because I've, I've done a bunch of businesses, I wanted a tangible product, you know, something you can touch, because I was in data before, which, uh, you know, is not the most exciting stuff in the world. And um, and I wanted it to be in food, and I wanted it to be good for the world, um, you know, kind of a halo effect. My sister agreed, so we started a company. It didn't have to be a bar company, but we we're flirting with a lot of foods with minimum ingredients, blah, 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 like a lot of people. We came up with a, a date-based bar, that which is sort of like a, a crunchier Lara bar, 
and it did pretty good. We launched it in 2014 without knowing what the hell I was doing. I was the sales guy. She was sort of the inside sales guy, gal. We hired a co-packer to manufacture for us. That was interesting. And I learned a lot in, in, in the first few years. Our go-to-market was very, very different than most CPG. If you take most natural foods, what they do day one is call on Whole Foods, call on Sprouts, call on Costco, hire brokers, go raise a ton of money, blah, blah, blah. We didn't do that only because I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing anyway. So I hit up my local Jewel, which is equivalent to, let's say in North Carolina, your Ingalls or, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Harris yeah. Teeter or something. Like Harris that. Teeter, yeah, actually we're in Harris Teeter. So you hit up your local food company thinking, you know, uh, oh, they'll love us, we're local. And I learned uh, what uh, slotting fees were, and I learned uh, what distributors were, and brokers, and how everyone's got their hands in your pockets and all that. So I pivoted very quickly into food service. So our, our go-to-market year one of four was food service, going into Facebook and Uber and Oracle and all the places that I, I knew already. And a lot of those kind of places have really cool micro kitchens where they give food away for free. Packaged food, I mean, not like, you know, sushi. Um, And so that's what we did. Um, And so I'd walk into Facebook where I know people and I'd pitch their food and beverage person and hopefully get an order. And I didn't have to go through a distributor and I didn't have to grease anybody's palms with, you know, Compass or whoever. And uh, it just worked. And then... At some point, we said, okay, we've got a nice business. We got to about a million in sales, um, but we need to get into retail. And so I picked, I stayed away from grocery again, uh, which again is atypical because it's so expensive to get into grocery with slotting and markdowns and markups and blah, 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 and distributors. Um, We went into C stores. So we got into Wawa, Sheets, Racetrack, Merlin Farms, all kind of the best of the best. And at that time, we started pivoting. This is when a brand called Quest was blowing up, um, which is high protein, low sugar. Um, and we were still with the date bar. And we said, you know what? It might be time to kind of pivot the brand. I don't know if the world needs another date bar, um, but the world clearly is enjoying high protein, low sugar. I, I'm a huge high protein, low sugar guy. Um, I liked it better than our date bar. So we pivoted into high protein, low sugar. Um, and then from there, we pivoted into functional, kind of a soft pivot, actually. We evolved into functional is a better way of putting it. And that is, we came out with a line of high protein, low sugar, did really well. Um, and then we added functional ingredients to it, whether it be caffeine from guarana seed or turmeric or omega-3s or MC2 oil, whatever. Yeah, you know, okay. we started adding functional ingredients and kind of got known as the functional guys and it just caught on. And then from there, during COVID, um, we got into Sam's, we got into Aldi, we got into Kroger, we got into Harris Teeter. We just started growing more into more channels. Um, C stores still being the biggest at the time. COVID happens, C stores get crushed. Um, we go into mass, and that's when we went into to Sam's. Um, we're actually going into Walmart end of this week into 1,800 Walmarts. We're pretty stoked about. So the brand, I don't know of any other brand. I don't know of any other bar brand. I don't even even call us a bar brand anymore because we're in a pudding and we're into a bunch of stuff, but that you know we're at 500 percent um from the day covid started which is crazy because the bar category is down 25 percent since covid started um so we feel pretty happy jim i think you've definitely had this conversation once or twice before you are locked and loaded my friend uh you know what i give this pitch i give this pitch constantly as a matter of fact i was i was uh uh, just the first part of that, which is in a crowd, you know, in a crowded and popular category, blah, 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 blah. I was just teaching um, my grocery sales manager that you've got to start any conversation. This is just sales 101. Big picture. Here's how the world is looking at what you're selling. Pivot down a little bit. Here's where you come in. And then here's our solution. And then always tie the customer back into it. So you're not just blathering about yourself. Um, and so I always start with that in a very crowded category. Here's how we're different because there are a lot of bars. And there was a monster bar acquisition yesterday. I don't know if you guys read Cliff Bar sold. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, for three billion dollars. Three billion dollars. Who wow. yeah, who purchased them? Mondelez. Who? Mondelez, which is Kraft's snack business. Ma- okay, so essentially they craft. Wow. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Jim, you've given us big picture. 
let's dive into the small picture a little bit. Got it. Uh, you said, and this is a big thing, uh, as a protein bar eater myself, uh, high protein, low sugar is a big thing. What does that mean exactly? Define those parameters for you. Like if I'm going to get a Jimmy bar, what is, what is high protein and what is low sugar in, in the context of a Jimmy bar? Just by macros, uh, high protein is everything, anything over 15 grams. Low sugar is anything under 10. Some brands do one gram of sugar and 20 grams. Um, you know, that's pretty normal. We are yeah. a little bit all over the place because uh, taste is really important to us. So instead of coming out with a line that's all 20 and one, 20 and one, 20 and one, 20 and one, and, and having half the bars that taste like crap, um, we loosened it up a little bit and we uh, said, let's just make it taste amazing. We'll take the sugar down as far as we can. So most of our bars have about five grams of sugar, which is nothing. Um, yeah. Our bars range from, I think, 18 grams of protein up to 25. We've got a bar called Eye of the Tiger, um, which is a licensing deal we did with the guy who, uh, Jim Peter, who wrote the song um, for Sylvester Stallone. He was in the band Survivor, if you remember them, from the uh, 80s and 90s. He's a buddy. Well. Yeah. yeah. We all everybody. Know well. Yeah. It's like uh, everybody, you know, whatever sport you're in in high school, football, you know, soccer, whatever, you'd come out to Eye of the Tiger. And uh, it's the ultimate, uh, you know, workout tune. It's still like the, one, the number one workout tune in the world. You know, what's, music. what's funny about that? Uh, shortly after you and I connected via email to, uh, to have you on the show, I have a. Um, I have a home karaoke machine that my daughters and I will jam on from time to time. And it literally was, I think the next day, because I told my nine-year-old, Hey, we're going to be interviewing a, a company who's connected to the eye of the tiger song. So Charlotte played eye of the tiger on the karaoke machine and asked me to sing it. And guess what I did? I blew what? the karaoke machine up while <laughs> singing eye of the tiger. Like it literally doesn't work any longer. I blew You're it. So amped it up. Yeah, exactly. I had the eye, man. I was doing it and I literally destroyed it. I had to take it back and get a new one. Uh, but then just to make sure I put that same song on with the new unit and said, all right, we got to do the eye of the tiger test. And I let it out as loud as possible. And it, and it's, and it survived. So, you know, test one or test two worked out pretty well. Let me know next, time, Nick, let me know Charlotte's next birthday. Cause I'll have Jim Peterick do a, uh, a serenade. He's a, <laughs> Extremely no, he he. So he he's such a great guy. He's like seventy with purple hair, and he works out. He still kept kept himself nice and lean. Kept his money. Sylvester Stallone let him keep the naming rights to Eye of the Tiger, which is why we can use it. We're actually thinking about doing it for our, our keto dessert cups too. Oh, cool! Because um, it's an iconic name. And um, I had him. I said that we opened up a, a grocery chain in Chicago. And I said, hey, man, would you mind, you know, I know you've played in front of a million people, but would you mind playing in front of the produce aisle uh, so we can, <laughs> pro <laughs> can, can we, we can promote I, the Tiger Bar? He's like, sure, dude, no problem. And he did. It was hysterical. I, I, if he was here right now, I definitely would have to ask him, Jim, I know you, you did this for fun and support and all, but there had to have been a, like a glimpse in your brain like going into the second verse when you look over and you see the frozen peas over here and the discount uh, day old bread over here, just thinking, what does my life come to? And well, then eventually so I, snap out of it. <laughs> so when I, he made me be the MC and stay, you know, he's got a huge following still, especially in Chicago. Oh, sure. um, he's also got a band called Ides of March, which uh, you remember the tune from uh, the seventies. Uh, I'm your vehicle. I'm your vehicle. I'm your vehicle. Um, it's a great tune. And, um, so uh, he said, just get up there and say something. There's probably like 100 people in the protocol, right? And so I get up and I said, you know, he's played 80,000 people in China. He's played, he did his big show. He did like 70,000 people in Prague. Now he's playing the protocol, you know, in Westmont, uh, Illinois, because, you know, he has not forgot where he comes from, which is the Western Burbs of Chicago. And the place just erupted. People loved it. And then That's he played awesome. like a, a five song set, I the Tiger, Vehicle, a lot of stuff from Survivor. He actually wrote a lot of tunes for 38 Special. Like a lot of the you know, the best tunes for 38 Special. So oh, wow. it was cool. Anyways, the brand is fun. Like yeah. if you look at a lot of, you know, natural foods, bars, jerky, whatever, they're pretty serious. And it's um, you know, it's a lot of uh 
you know, it's a lot of like supreme power bar, blah, you know, a lot of that stuff, a lot of, a lot of testosterone. And so when we started our brand, we did the antithesis, Jimmy, not a, not a particularly, uh, uh, you know, meathead sounding name. And, um, and then we also use Tiffany blue as our rapper, um, which is, you know, the opposite of what food brands do because blue has always been thought of as a, uh, appetite repressant. So, um, we did everything a little bit different on purpose. Now, you know, eight years down the road is we're kind of the functional leaders. Um, now we're actually trying to get more men on board because we skew um, probably 60, 40 female. And uh, I, you know, thought to myself, God, we're kind of missing out on a lot of dudes um, because we've got women who are followers, which is fantastic. And we love it. We have millennial moms is always the Holy grail. If you talk to any, company you know any food company on planet earth we want millennial moms well so do we <laughs> and the good thing is we we have a good number now now we're trying to get um some men on board too because it's high protein low sugar and so we started my passion is i love mma uh, martial arts um and so um uh, we started to get fighters on board men, men and women actually we have more women fighters but lots with the ufc and Bellator yeah. fighters work their ass off don't get paid anywhere near you think what they should be get paid you know compared to other athletes and it's just so we're now the the number one brand in martial arts whether it would be you know professional fighters top 10 in the world uh or just you know moms taking their kids to taekwondo class um that's sort of what we're known for right now which is really cool that's amazing well also just back to the you know if you two could play in the uh local kmart then uh jim could play in the westmont illinois i think there you go. Apples, apples, there. Um, I would okay. I'd love to have Bono play with us. <laughs> yeah. There you go. The Bono bar. Um, so back to the actual bar for a second. So I, I love it because uh, a lot of those bars out there, especially in the grocery market that you go to and you look at and it's like, oh, they claim to be high protein, low sugar. Well, the protein's, protein's high, but then you look at the sugar and it's like 25 to 40 grams of sugar. How is that low sugar bar? So, uh, you guys, I think, uh, got your your legit card with that one. Um, but also, you said about taste, that taste is, you know, important to you guys. And um, part of the story here is your sister, who, uh, for those chefs out there listening and being like, oh, well, why are we talking about protein bars? And why are we talking about this? Well, your your sister helped create this brand, and she is a trained chef, correct? Yeah, she, she is a trained chef and restaurateur. Um, she doesn't eat bars, you know, I mean, real foodies don't eat bars. Um, it's just how it is. Cause they're, you know, my sister's, if you came to her house, she's going to be making a chicken Vesuvio or, you know, they had an Italian restaurant in 25 years. Her husband is, um, a, a classically trained chef from, from Naples, Italy, like off the boat, mm-hmm. they eat real food. And the amazing thing is they cook very simple, you know, but everything that they make is the best stuff I've ever had in my life. It's, like my wife and you know, we go to when we visit Chicago, we just camp out at their house and we eat. Um, but so her big thing was, you know, she did not love the idea of making them too healthy because <laughs> you know, healthy often means it doesn't taste as rich and decadent. And then B, she always says you eat with your eyes. And so if you look at a cliff bar quest, and I'm not picking on anybody, but if you look at a bar, you know, a power bar, they don't look great. You know, it looks like a block of, you know, tar yeah. or something. Like it that. looks like, like future food. This is like what the Jetsons were going to tell you to eat. You know, it's important to eat with your eyes and the, and the bars are attractive. And then, you know, in the aisle, what Matthew said was that, you know, you look at it and it might say 20 grams of protein, but it also has 37 grams of sugar, right? And so there's a lot of phoniness and there's a lot of marketing. And if you look at the biggest brands out there, whether it be in bars or, or any other category in the natural set, it's mostly marketing. It's mostly people right. who raised a, a ton of money and they blew out the little guys because they outspent the little guys um, or they have really smart operators on board. It's typically not, you know, the best for you. I mean, think about the biggest restaurant chains in the world, Burger King, McDonald's, whatever. Is that the best food? I don't know. McDonald's has great French fries, but it's sure as hell not the best hamburger in the world you know it's just not 
but they've been around the longest. Cliff Bar has very, is very high in sugar. You know, I have no beef with Cliff Bar. I've got friends over there, but it's very high in sugar. Um, but what they and what a lot of other companies do is they put this magic word called organic in front of every ingredient they sell. So it'll be organic brown rice syrup. That's also called sugar. Organic <laughs> blah, blah, blah. That's also crap. You know, it's like, that's what they do. And, and that's where the marketing comes in. That's what drives me nuts about the industry is that there's, there's so much marketing and there's so much nonsense in CPG that it's hard for, you know, brands with founders who really want to do good who really want to do the right thing and want to, you know, help people eat right. It's hard to break through that clutter, but it does happen. No different than in rock and roll where, you know, in the eighties you had a lot of cheesy hair bands and then comes guns and roses and then comes, you know, Nirvana right. out there with the truth, you know, and it just comes out and blows everybody away. And that's kind of what we seek to do. And that, you know, having bars that not only look good because we're the only bars that look good, taste amazing because most bars don't. Um, and that our marketing's honest. Yeah. So how, well, so you mentioned about the slotting fees, but eventually you did get into the big retailers. So did the slotting fees go away or did you guys just successful that you're like, okay, at this point, it's a barrier to entry that we can afford. So great question. We did something that, um, most brands don't do. We think is clever. We hope it works out. We started doing private label. Um, and because we self manufacture, you know, uh, the first five, first four years of our existence, when we were mostly in food service, we were using co-packers. We went through five co-packers in four years, every one of them ending in a bad divorce because they're using the cheapest ingredients with the cheapest labor, not keeping their eye on the ball. It's not their brand, right? If we order a hundred thousand bars and we get 119,000, we have to pay for it. If we order 100,000 bars and we get 74,000, tough luck, you know, standing back in the line. There's a lot of that. Um, and so my sister had been pushing from day one, let's self manufacture. She's like, you know, I've been making Asa Buko for 30 years in my restaurant. I can make a freaking protein bar. It's not that hard. <laughs> but I would resist it because I want, you know, I'm just a sales and marketing guy. I'm not mechanically inclined. I'm not a chef. And I didn't even know if we had anything. I didn't know if we had a real brand, you know, and this is when I was self finance, you know, I, I self financed the business for the first few years myself. So eventually she talked me into it and it's, it saved the business. Well, we self manufacture in our own facility, SQF level two, Costco, Walmart, uh, certified, Aldi certified, Kroger certified. It's a killer facility, but what it allows you to do is control the product. There's so many things you can't control on CPG. This is the one thing we can really control. And that is anything that comes out of this factory is going to taste good. And if it doesn't, it's on us. And I don't have to go back to a co-packer who makes bars for 87 other brands who doesn't give a damn about me anyway. So that's what, that's the big thing is that we self-manufacture. We visit the places where we buy peanuts and almonds and chocolate. We actually go in the factory. We don't buy the cheapest crap we can. We don't, you know, hire the, you know, people who don't care about, you know, our business. It's, it's a very much right. a family business where, you know, during COVID, which was pretty creepy because no one wanted to work. Um, you know, you walked into our factory and it's cousin, 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 cousin's boyfriend, cousin's girlfriend, co you know, and, and that's why the business is up 500% in, in two years. That's pretty crazy. That's a whole other world though. When you're starting the factory, I mean, then you got to worry, you got to buy equipment. You got to be more operational. It's a whole other skill set. Well, you know what? I, I I was lucky. So I had two people, my sister and Filippo, my brother-in-law, who have been in you know the food business for thirty years. You know, mm. Filippo a dessert company for ten years. He they had a restaurant for twenty five years. They actually had four restaurants. So they know how to produce food, right? And and a lot more complex food than a protein bar. Protein bar is just dough, smush it, cut it wrap it but you got to make it taste good so that's where they came in um and it was a relatively seamless and low drama um project to get the thing up and running uh but you know once you then you get into sqf and all the certifications then it gets a little tricky but then again they went through all this stuff you know when they had a restaurant so that's our unfair advantage and the other unfair advantage is that we have two chefs 
So when we have an idea like during COVID and everyone's talking about immune health um, and keep your immune system high. And so we came up with an immune bar with 300% of your vitamin C. It's just loaded with vitamin C with Osceola cherry, which is a very, very tart cherry, mango, orange, and the bar has been a really big hit um, because I've got two people who can, you know, from idea to selling was six weeks. That's unheard of. Big company, that'd be two years, and it would be a bunch of old guys in a boardroom saying, no, we can't because we're not owned by a big company. We have not taken institutional money. And it just makes us very different. So sorry, just to wrap that up. So did you end up paying the slotting fees then for the Harris Teeters of the world and those things? No, or no we did they, private label. I, I think I just babbled through that. Um, yeah, no, we so did because private. you have a private label, in that case, they, they don't you, they don't charge you those? If you, if you, if you have private label, if you do private label with some retailers, it's a way you can get into, uh, get your brand in there as well with some retails, not all. So that's the way we, so for a lot of, and I don't want to name names, but for some grocery chains to get in, you're going to be writing six figure checks. That's the deal. Deal with it or not. For us, we said, we definitely want to get into these places. I'm not going to pay $100,000 $100,000 to get it. I'm just not going to do it. Um, but private label makes sense. And as long as it's my IP, meaning my recipes, I'm not, I have no desire to make a knockoff of a cliff bar or whatever. Um, as long as it's my IP, I'll do it. Who cares? Got it. You know, so that's what we did. We took a, everything we do is, you know, again, because I didn't go out and I didn't raise 30 million bucks, like every other natural food company I self funded. Then I hit up my friends and family. Um, uh, it's forced us to be sort of, Clever. Well, let's talk about what else you're doing too, because you're not just doing bars. And you, uh, your team was was gracious enough to send us a little gift pack of everything, so you can sample uh, some of the some of the items that you <laughs> sell. But uh, I was kind of excited when I saw all the little puddings that were in here. Matt, yeah. what say you? Didn't you jump in on all that pudding? Well, just I mean, this is going to sound like a testimonial, but you know, I I think I mentioned I try to eat low sugar high protein for the most part. And so sweets don't necessarily enter too much into my diet. But uh, one night I had a little bit of a sweet tooth and um, there was really nothing around that was going to cure. And lo and behold, that night, that day I had brought home a keto uh, fudge peanut butter uh, dessert cup. And there it was in my fridge, all nice and cold. And it was just, it was cold. So it was like the texture there was a little less pudding and more fudgy. But it, yeah, it hit the spot and I felt really healthy about it. So home well, win-win on all. Accounts. So if, if you're on a low sugar diet, call it keto, call it paleo, call it whatever the hell, right? Um, there's three things you miss. Booze, because let's face it, there's no way around it. Maybe vodka. Um, pizza, there's no way around it because you got the crust. Sweets. Like I got a, I have a sweets problem. Uh, I've got an ice cream problem. So for, for that's what we, you know, Again, mid COVID, um, I wanted to do something outside of bars, right? So we can round our company out as not just a bar company, but as a snack company. And I wanted to pick a category that hasn't seen vision my rules 50 years. It just you know came out of my brain, right? And so I'm walking around, I'm in Beaver Creek and I'm walking around the local Kroger and Costco and Walmart and Sam's and so on. And I came to the pudding aisle. And it was snack back, snack back, snack. It was all, it was one brand who's owned it for a billion years. And the only innovation I have seen out of snack pack, and I like snack pack, so I'm not dissing them, is uh, they used to have the metal lids that you'd lick when you're a kid and you slice your tongue off. You know, they don't have that anymore. So that was yeah. their big innovation. They, you know, don't, you know, cut your kid's tongue off. Um, but let's make something that's actually healthy and low sugar. So again, I go to my sister and say, come up with something but it's got to be shelf stable. I didn't want it refrigerated. I don't know if that was the smartest move or not, but I wanted, I wanted it shelf stable so I can sell it on Amazon. And so she came up with something that was, re- it was so fudgy. I mean, eating that stuff's like eating fudge, right? Yeah. And uh, we found a co-packer to make it for us. It's now the number one trending keto dessert. I, I know in North America on Amazon, but it's just killed it. And then we didn't really want to take it to retail yet. Um, But now we have like the TJ Maxx's and Marshall's of the world. It's doing extremely well. Now we're pitching um, a lot of the chains we're working with um, 
we're pitching Walmart, we're pitching Sam's. So we think we're, gonna, we're actually going to go into samsclub.com with the, uh, the keto cup. So, you know, you can innovate on the fly a little bit as long as, you know, you're lucky and you've got chefs on staff. Yeah, yeah that's cool. This is like a, yeah, it's a great little snack for the kids or for, I don't know if you're packing lunch or just stocking your office supplies or stocking your home office. And uh, I mean, for what you get and the ingredients put into us, it's, it's, I'm looking at it now, it's about, it looks like you order for about 26 bucks and you get 12, 12, three ounce cups for that. Yeah. It's a couple bucks. It's a couple bucks. And guess what? If you went to, I don't know about North Carolina, but there's a great gelato place uh, down the street from me here in Scottsdale. It's like six bucks a scoop. Yeah. And granted, that gelato is going to taste damn good, but <laughs> it's also going to be, you know, probably 40 grams Five of times sugar. The sugar. Yeah. Six times. <laughs> it's not going to help the cause if, if you're trying to uh, stay in great shape, that's for sure. You said uh, you were talking about pizza earlier that it's typically off the table, but you are in Arizona. So do you ever get out to Pizzeria Bianco, the James Beard Award win winning Pizzeria Bianco? Yeah, I know it. I've never been, um, which is crazy. Uh, there is some good pizza here because there's so many Midwesterners. There's so many Chicagoans. Yeah, um, Chris, no, just uh, many, many consider him to be the greatest pizza in the land in all of America, which is, you know, obviously blasphemy to say to a lot of people. But James Beard's just uh, kind of re, uh, re-upped that truth uh, this year by calling him, I think, didn't he just win Best Restaurateur? He uh, did. Yeah, so. I, I, I've heard of it. I've never been, but I, I will now. Yeah, you got to get out there. He's in Scottsdale and Phoenix, or he's just in Scottsdale. I, I, I can't remember. He, Pizzeria Bianco's in only in Phoenix, so only you got Phoenix. you got to take a drive. But yeah, yeah, that's okay. But uh, well, that's great. So, uh, any uh, do you, just to relate it back to North Carolina? Any connection into North Carolina that we may? Yeah, have? big time. Um, we've got a lot of connections into North Carolina. Um, we are in a great distributor called Tropical Fruit. Uh, Tropical Foods, which is based in Charlotte. Um, we're in Harris Teeter. Um, we're in Ingalls. We've got about five or six or seven SKUs in Ingalls. Oh, yeah. uh, Wawa, which is um, a fantastic sea uh, store chain. Um, we, I like that market. Then you've got Fresh Market. We're talking to those guys. Oh, yeah. Earth, we're talking to those guys. So it's a market we really like. Um, and I personally, I just, I like it down there. It's great. Probably the best most temperate weather you can find is in North and South Carolina. Yeah. Not too bad. Well, uh, thank this, you for giving us your time today. This has been, this has been educational as the guy that, uh, while Matt's eating his keto bars, I'm the one going through a Taco Bell line and getting my, uh, double wrapped crunch wrap Supreme. Uh, so <laughs> it is nice to get, uh, the conversation spoken about on the other side of the, uh, the health wheel for me to, Maybe, yeah, maybe I'll give it a chance. You know, 20 grams of protein, two grams of sugar. Why not? That sounds like a good yeah. idea. You know what? It. I'm not saying it's going to taste as great as Taco Bell, um, but it will. It you'll eat it. In in uh, our whole thing is eat with purpose, right? So whatever you're, you know, it's two o'clock. You're falling asleep. You eat a, you know, one of our bars of caffeine peps you up a little bit. Uh, you're full, you forget about your Taco Bell and all that, two bites, and you probably save 800 calories. Well, yeah, that would truly I, I, be magic. Yeah. Yeah. But I also, I mean, no no kidding, and Max and I talked about this offline a little bit. I mean, listen, yes, foodies want to eat great food and always have these epic meals, but the truth of it is, especially for a lot of our listeners that are in the industry, chefs and restaurant work, front of the house, restaurant workers, bartenders, they don't have the time. And maybe they are somewhat health healthy inclined and they want like an upper, you know, or something that's going to give them some energy. And so this is this is perfect, especially if they are somewhat health conscious to have a quick snack on the go and get back to get back behind the stick. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's how the younger generation eats. That's how millennials eat. And that's how the other generation eats. And that is solve the problem. You know, solve I mean, problem. Co coffee is the ultimate functional food or drink. Right. You drink it because you need a buzz in the morning to wake up. Um, there's teas, you know, sleepy time tea. There's teas for everything now. 
tease when you're in a crappy mood or tease when you want to calm down or tease when you want to perk up or, you know, whatever you're, people eat very differently than, you know, I'm 54, you know, I was stuffing, you know, ding-dongs and ho-hos and, you know, Susie Q's, you know, for lunch, you know, <laughs> you know, I mean, my kid actually eats like that, but, you know, people eat very differently who are, are a, little, a little more inclined to eat for function. And so kind of, that's where we sit, but thank you guys so much for having yeah. me. We appreciate um, it. Next time I'm in Carolina, I'd love to uh, hook up and grab a beer. Yeah, come uh, come by the studio, check it out. We've uh, now featuring Jimmy Barr is uh, sitting there in the studio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but okay. uh, well, appreciate it, and um, thank you for your time, Matt. What you got? Anything else before we go? Thanks, Jim. Thanks for all the business insight as well, and uh, for these great bars, I will definitely be uh, enjoying them. So for all of you out there, go grab yourself a Jimmy Bar or a Jimmy Keto dessert cup, and you will eat very merrily. Thanks for listening to the NC F&B Podcast. And if you've stuck with us this long, review us on iTunes, and remember, five stars are encouraged.